Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my luxury motor camping setup. This is my Oxford X1 City Bar bag. Two sections, the bottom part and the top part, which comes off with four clips. All the way around like that. Got a handy top section if you want to take it anywhere separately to all the other stuff that you've got, but I just use it all as one setup, just like that. So inside this bag, Goal Zero Lantern, which also doubles as a torch as well. It has three settings. Just like that. Little carabiner on the top, just hang it from the top of your tent. I also carry with me a head torch. And I've got my little cheapo Chinese pillar, which you've probably seen before. It's about the size of a Coke can. Helps if you press the valve first. Comfy. Next in the pack is my snug pack. This is the Elite 2. Um, fairly small bag. Weighs in at 1.3 kilos and is good for minus three, I believe. Yeah, comfort rating of two degrees and a low of minus three. Um, it's mainly just my summer bag because I use this as well. This is my Euro Hike Adventure 300 XL. I've had this about five years. Basically, when it's cold, I'll put this one inside of this one. Nice and warm. Next up in the top part of the pack, keep my wash bag, which has a microfiber towel in there, uh, and also a little resealable bag, which has got deodorant, uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, a bit of shower gel, and some aftershave. And then also in the top of there, I've got my little Coleman stove, um, purely because I don't really have a lot of space in the pack to put it, um, but that basically goes on top of your gas, spins on the top. That's three legs that kick out like that. It's actually four legs. Turn the gas on, has a little piezo igniter there. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good piece of kit. Used it for a little while now. So that was the top part of the bag. In the bottom section, which does with some big heavy duty Velcro around the top, is my luxury camping chair now i don't always keep this in the bag sometimes i'll just strap it to the bike with um a big bungee net uh, but for the purpose of this video i've been able to fit it in the bag it's roughly about the size of 10 cans so um that would be normally where my beer would sit <laughs> nice comfy chair. I also managed to get hold of one of these which is actually made by Helinox. There we have it, nice little cup holder for the side of the chair. So that's my luxury camping chair do have a Helinox one for my lightweight stuff, but I'll show you that in a different video. Um, this is a Helinox style one. I know they make one this sort of size, but 
They're very expensive. I mean, I think I picked this up from Amazon for about £30. It's got a good weight limit on it. I mean, I'm quite a big guy and um, yeah, it's been good for me for a couple of years now. Next in my pack. It's my warm gear. Obviously, when I say this is a luxury, um, this is mainly cold weather as well. Um, I keep some woolly socks. Deer stalker style hat. Probably wear this one as well. Um, and some sort of fleece lined gloves. It's obviously really important to make sure you're staying warm. Next is my Trekology UL80 sleeping pad. This is actually the older model. The newer ones have a sort of slight curve in them, uh, but this one doesn't. Um, it comes with its own pump sack, which I thought was pretty good. And in all honesty, I got this for £12 off Amazon. Um, I got some kind of random code come up on my Facebook feed once, um, about 18 months ago, and um, never even really seen them before that. Um, most of the ones that I had seen were over £100, like your Thermarest style ones. So to pick this up for £12, uh, I thought it was a bit of a bargain. I've slept on it quite a lot. Um, I, had some, I mainly put it on top of my camping bed, um, which is like a military style camping cot, um, where you slide the poles down the sides and then it has like a couple of little wires that go underneath it. When I say wires, they're legs basically. So that, with this on the top, is good for a comfy night's sleep. I also carry a water bladder, it's only a cheap one, it's probably seen better days, do with a new one I think. Now this, it is my Ridge Monkey. If you know about these then you know. So I, I bought the reinforced case for it to make sure it stays safe. Inside this kit, I have two square plates. I also keep one of these little Bunsen burner style gauzes. So when I'm cooking on it, it spreads the heat and doesn't burn your food as easy. I also have one of these sort of, I think it's fiberglass. Um, it's like a heat proof mat. So I can put my burner on, on the top of that and it stops obviously the heat that's coming down from the top of the burner melting whatever I've got this rested on. Also in here, I keep a little cut off of sponge for washing the dishes. Some tongs. Fire lighter. Spare lighter, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then the actual Ridge Monkey itself. Comes in a neoprene cover. It folds open like so. And obviously inside, various utensils. Lift that out, and you have your handles, which just click on like so. has two magnets which lock it together so it means that you can flip it and not worry about anything going anywhere. Also, you can separate them, use them as two pans, independent, which is always handy. When you're done, push the button on the handle, pull it off. Same on the other side utensils back in there and underneath there's two little slots for your handles to go back in. Close it up, back in the neoprene case. Let's have a couple of black bags just for rubbish. In the side of the bag I have another pouch which I keep a 
cloth in, some cooking oil, ketchup, washing up liquid or dish soap as they call it in America. Obviously in a resealable bag because I don't want that getting on anything. Knife, fork and spoon. And a couple more spare lighters, just in case. While we're on the subject of my cook set, that's the majority of it. But I also have this bad boy. Now I know everyone's probably got one of these, but I did find out that this little molly pouch, which is good for the one litre Nalgene bottles, um, my jet boil fits in it. Now, thanks to Paul Messner, I got myself one of these, which is a Sea to Summit mug, pop up mug, which fits perfectly in the top of the molly pouch. Just underneath there is my gas, which I, knew, I normally take the extreme gas during the winter because it's good for minus 27. Now it is a snug fit. But it is a perfect fit. So obviously if you've not seen a jet boil before, um, That's basically what you get. It's an all-in-one cook system. It has a little cup underneath. So you've got a rubber lid with a little pouring spout in it. Inside, I've got a little pot support where the legs turn out like so. Underneath that is the burner itself. Now it has quite a small head on it, which is the reason that I bring the Coleman one because it will help to distribute the heat a bit better if I want to simmer things and such like that. But the pot stand fits on there like so and that allows you to put your frying pan or pot or, or anything on the top screws onto your gas like so and right in the bottom i also have the actual gas canister stand which clicks onto the bottom like so so that screws onto the top of there like that that clicks onto there like that and that gives you a, um, a system for cooking If you're just trying to boil water though, remove the cup. There are some, I don't know if you can see that, little lugs on the bottom, which line up to two lugs on the bottom of here, like that, twist, and it locks into place. But that's not coming off there. So it's a pretty sturdy system. And just in the front pouch there, I'll keep myself tea, coffee, powdered milk, maybe some sugar. I don't take sugar, but it's always handy just in case anyone else needs any. At the minute this is empty, but it's just a Sainsbury's little cool bag. Um, normally what I keep in there is some bacon, sausage, maybe some milk, anything that needs to be kept cool really. So finally in the large compartment, just keep this which is two power banks, foam charger. You'll see why I've got the small power bank in a second. So just to finish off the bag, in the other side pocket, I've got a first aid kit, which I also keep some earplugs in just in case it gets a bit rowdy. <laughs> I've never used these. Uh, I've got a puncher of repair kit for the uh, Trekology pad. Then I've got various things that you would need like indigestion tablets, plasters, bandages, um, that sort of thing really. Andrex wipes, keep clean. And uh, it's a bit battered, but this isn't a toilet roll that I take everywhere with me. Um, sometimes when you go to the, some of the bigger rallies, um, and you go to the port and lose, there's a small chance there might not be any toilet roll. So I'll take that with me every time just to make sure. All right, so just in the front pouch here, 
Keep a tool roll. Now I'm going to go into more detail in a different video on this because it's quite intensive. <laughs> intensive, is that the word? It's quite expansive. So that's the actual bag out of the way. Um, the final thing really is my tent. Now you might think this is a bit overkill because it is pretty big. But this is the Kyan Biker Plus. Um, it weighs about nine kilos. Um, I have the ground sheet in there with that. So you may have seen me use this on the Storm in the Teacup Rally video, which I'll uh, post a link up here for you. Um, it's a pop-up tent. So basically you just pull it out, extend the legs, peg it down. Easy as that, you would think. Now it is, it is literally as easy as that. Um, it's a very good tent. I've only used it a handful of times um, purely because I've only had it 18 months or so. Um, I do have a couple of other tents which I'll maybe show you in a couple of other videos but um, this is by far the, my favourite one. Uh, it has a very big porch, you can stand up in it. Um, it's just an all-round decent tent. The only downside is obviously the pack size of it but a good friend always said to me that it's the bike that carries the weight, it's not yourself. And if you think about it that's true. If you carry a pillion on, your, on the back of your bike they're going to weigh 80 kilos. This this weighs nine kilos, so it's nowhere near the weight of a person. So just going into detail in this bag, um, it's actually flipped the wrong way around because I'd normally put these items underneath the tent um, because obviously the tent is the first thing you take out of the bag. But I do have, it's not the best in the world, but it's a small heated blanket. And that's why I carry the small power bank with me. Um, it has three three heat settings. Um, it was fairly expensive. Um, it was about 40 quid off Amazon. Um, my wife bought it me. But the downside to it is the heat panel is about 300 square. 300 millimetre square in the middle. So that's all you get. So, I mean, it's good for a foot warmer, but nothing else really. But it's nice and soft. Nice fleece blanket. So I'll take this with me if it's going to be cold. Next, I also take this other fleece blanket, which I'll normally put on top of my cot underneath the um, UL80, um, just to give me a little bit more protection. I also have a table. I think I've shown you this in a different video. Again, the Storm in the Teacup Rally. Probably about 12 pounds off eBay. up like so secured with some little horizontal rods like that and the top part clicks in just like that there we go another bit of luxury finally have a tent carpet. It's pretty thin, probably doesn't really give you much protection but I like it. Nice blue tartan. Fits almost the footprint of the tent so it covers most of it which is great and uh, yeah just gives you a little, a little bit of that luxury like I was saying. So let me know what you think to my setup and what kind of things that you would take on your camping trips. Thanks for watching.